Hey everyone, hey everyone, hey everyone, hey everyone, welcome back to another video. As you guys know, towards the end of the year, I always like to do a review, um, kind of compilation of all the awesome stuff that has happened on the channel since the beginning of the year. So hope you guys enjoy my 2021 um, compilation of videos uh, this year, and I'll see you guys in 2022. I got a lot of awesome stuff lined up for 2022, so make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't done so already. Um, you don't have to subscribe, it's just going to be harder to find my videos if you don't. So anyway, here we go, um, 2021. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today, I'm out here at Arapaho Bar Gold Panning Area in Wheat Ridge, Colorado, uh, with a bunch of Patreon supporters. Um, some of them don't want to be on camera, so if they're blurred out in the beginning, <laughs> sorry about that. So we're out here panning for gold. We just did one sample pan, found three nice pieces. That sample pan I did was right over here and we found three nice flakes. So we've got a few people digging over here. We've got Dan over here digging. Is that not gold sticking to the rock? Let's see. That is pyrite. Is it really? That is fool's gold. I'm glad I asked. Yep, Me. yep. Yeah, gold is gonna be like in that test pan, it was just solid yellow. Oh. You know, this is like, if you turn it, it like glares. Oh yeah, 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 I see. Gold, gold won't glare as you turn it and okay. it'll shine in the shadows you put a shadow on that pyrite and it goes away gotcha i was thinking about taking this piece of carpet here home if this carpet was here in the water it most likely collected pieces of flower gold if i burn this and pan it down pan down the ashes you never know he's down in the good stuff yeah go deep this is material that hasn't been touched yet so he's digging down in there and hopefully we can find some better gold but yeah we got some nice gold from Arapaho Bar. Thanks again to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members that joined me on this trip. All right, so we're over here at our office for our pay dirt, and um, we're working on some orders. I just did a discount, 15% off site-wide, and this guy ordered some pay dirt. I'm not gonna show the address, but he's right down the street, so we're actually gonna go just deliver those right now. So we're gonna leave this note with the package, or if he doesn't answer the door, that way he gets his shipping back too. All right, let's knock on the door and run. Ready? I'll just knock on the door. It might not be. That's no, okay. We got the pay dirt in here. I put the 10 bucks in there. Oh. Charles. Hey, yeah. hey here's your pay dirt, man. This guy. Yeah. You just ordered. Yeah. All right, so Heather said that the camera shut off. We did deliver it to him, and he was really happy with that with that delivery service. So if you guys want to buy some pay dirt, clutchcrumbs.com, and it might even get delivered to you. <laughs> Man, I mean, I love Colorado, but I think I'd rather be at the beach somewhere. Oh, dude. This is not what I was expecting. We're at the beach, Cape Disappointment, Washington. But I wish I had some help. Hey, what's up, man? What's up? Hey, hey, dude. Nice to you meet doing? you. I have great prospectors. Uh, Pacific Northwest prospecting. And today we're out here at Cape Disappointment, Washington. It's a little bit rainy. A little and we're bit about to get washed away. We're about to get washed away. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. hey, my shovel, I need that. I found a hole. Digging down to try to get to that black sand layer. And he's down four feet right now. And we're just starting to get to that black sand layer. That's where the good gold is. <laughs> ready? No, you have to stand on one side. All right, ready? All right, go ahead. <laughs> Over here we have Matt, one of my patrons on Patreon. Hey, How's man. it going, man? It's going. Look at this setup. Thanks a lot for bringing me on this awesome prospecting adventure here in Washington State. And I'll see you guys back in Colorado. All right, we're back in Colorado. It's good to be back. A little bit more snowy, but the weather is actually nicer here. So um, we have like 40 pounds of black sand that we have to process now back at the Panda Station. Um, we're gonna try a couple different processes on how to recover the gold. I can see the gold starting to come out the bottom here. Now the gold is extremely fine, but you can see right in here, 
you can see all the gold just dancing around down here. I just have to lower the pressure a bit and the gold will drop out. All right, here's the gold from the Washington trip. Definitely a pretty nice haul. Probably about a tenth of a gram there, I would say. So today I'm out here on frozen Clear Creek in Colorado. And the reason I'm out here is because I'm running low on pay dirt material. So I'm out here chopping through the ice um, in the middle of the creek, um, trying to find a good place for some natural Colorado plaster deposit. That is the good stuff. All that hard packed clay right there. That is where the gold gets trapped. I'm down to that layer. Okay, I'm gonna finish cleaning this up and I'll see you guys back at the panda station. All right, gold rush pay dirt. Dear Clash, my name is Julian and I just turned eight years old. I really love watching all of your prospecting videos. I have just started to learn how to pan for gold. I even asked Santa for my own bag of pay dirt. My favorite videos of yours are the pay dirt review videos. I have made my own pay dirt for you to review. Oh, awesome. I will definitely do a review of this pay dirt. Thank you very much. Facts about my pay dirt. You might find gold. Two, I can guarantee you that there will is going to be crystals inside. And I hope you have a great time panning it out. Please keep making videos. Your fan, Julian. Well, thanks so much, Julian. Uh, that is awesome. And I know you sent it before Christmas, so I appreciate that. And why don't you email me, and I'll send you a free bag of my own pay dirt. That. Clash Mining. G-P-A-H for gold prospecting at home. Krusty Rusty was here. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta zoom in on this thing, man. Look at this. Holy cow, guys, wait till you see this. I'm just leaving the bank, and every single one of these, hold on a second. All right, so I just went to the bank looking for half dollars to hopefully find some silver. And I just got a, they said they have $140 worth of customer wrapped. So I said, yeah, I'll take them. Now, if they are actually 1965 to 1969, Every single one of them, look at this. If this is true, that means they're all silver, all 40% silver half dollars, which makes this the biggest score. I gotta check these out. Let's go home and I will check them out. I'm not even gonna look at it, I'm gonna look at the camera. Oh, it looks silver to me, man, that totally looks silver. I mean, look at this, man. You can tell that they've been in the roll for a long time because they're like, they're tarnished evenly they all have the same exact tarnish on like, you see that? The silver is tarnished a certain way. Um, these have been in the rolls for years. 1960 Franklin, that goes on the 90% pile. I mean, I was driving around all day looking for half dollars and I just happened to get lucky with this one place. I'm gonna do some math here. This is what I spent. This is what I profited. Thanks for watching. That was crazy. By far, the most requested thing I get on this channel is to do more bigger, expensive buckets of dirt videos. So my first expensive one was $1,000, then I went to $1,250, $1,500, $2,500, $5,000, and today we're gonna be doing a $10,000 bucket of pay dirt. Let's take a look at it in a pan. Nice. All these will be going into my pay dirt bags, clashgold.com if you're interested, link below. Check this out. I'll just shut it off just for a second to show you what's in here. So if you like fire and you like gold, you're gonna really enjoy this video. I found this old ratty piece of carpet buried in the gold containing gravels and we're gonna burn it with a torch and we're gonna pan out the ashes. Well, that's a stinky mess. Good news is all the gold in it is gonna sink to the bottom and everything else is gonna float to the top. Talk about hydrophobic. 
I wonder if I added some jet dry if it would make it sink. We'll use a lot. Let's see if that works. Yeah, I think it is working. Look at that, it's turning into mud. <laughs> this is really strange. But I'm gonna go ahead and pan the rest of this stuff out and I'll show you if I got any gold. Today I'm in the state of Tennessee and we're at the Coker Creek Welcome Center. That basically means just hands and pans, shovels and buckets. Okay, so we drove around for about two hours looking for an access point to either Wildcat Creek or Lions Creek. Those are the two areas that were allowed to pan for gold according to the US Forest Service up in Monroe County. Couldn't find an access point, so I went back to the Welcome Center and they said to come down here to Coker Creek Falls in Polk County. It's about six miles south of the Welcome Center. We're allowed to pan for gold here, so we finally found a spot. I'm really excited and I saw some bedrock over here. Let me show you guys, this is, this is pretty awesome. So yeah, check it out bedrock all throughout here. Got some shovels, gold pan, classifier, some buckets, and a snuffer bottle. It's all, that's all oh, dark. Dude. Oh, it's all black. Yeah, it is. I'm hopeful, but we'll see. All right. Gotta be really careful because it's really, really fine gold like we have in Clear Creek in Colorado. There's a piece of gold. There is. Right there. Let me grab my snuffer bottle and grab it as I see it. Yeah, it's, that was worth the trip alone. Yeah, dude. Here we go. I got some nice clay material. That is good stuff. That right there, that acts as a false bedrock and it'll actually trap the gold. But, I mean, what do you think, man? We did pretty good. It was awesome. Compared to Colorado even. Yeah, I think, I mean, I even had more fun just being out here in a different scenery. Oh yeah. Different surroundings. Yeah, we got different trees and everything in Tennessee compared to the cottonwoods and pines of Colorado. Here you got like a thousand different kinds of trees. Oh, and great. Everybody's really nice down here, so can't say enough about that. I used to live in Tennessee about 20 years ago and it's nice to come back and see that everything's basically exactly the same as it used to be, so. Anyway, um, thanks everybody for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Old vintage can of pay dirt. I'm gonna guess 1960s. Um, if anybody knows anything about this, this product, definitely put it in the comments and I'll pin your comment to the top. Okay, here it is, the authentic placer gold. Right, let's take a look at it in a pan. Very nice. Uh, what's you... going on? What's up, man? All right, so we're looking for a place to prospect out here. I sent the drone up, we are way out this way and there's a nice turn, I don't know if you can see it here on camera, there's a bend in the creek, there's no people, there's a walking path, and there's parking. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to head over to that area. Let's see if I can get him on camera. Oh, Alright, so we found a decent location here, it looks like Josh is right on where I would be digging too. As you can see there's some rocks kind of right there where gold could possibly get trapped. There's a fair amount of black sands, lots of garnets in there. I could see a lot of red garnet shining. Some bigger garnets compared to some other areas. Let's see anything yet. Oh yeah, there is gold, man. Dude, there's a couple nice pieces, man. Oh, wow. Hold on, it's right in the glare. All right, so it's high noon right now, so it's absolutely the worst time to be filming because the sun and the glare is absolutely the worst. For one quarter of a bucket, is ridiculously good.
That was a pretty good haul. I spent no more than, I don't know, 10, 11 minutes. So if you ask me, that's 100% proof of how easy it is to go gold prospecting and metal detecting and just have plain luck. So today I'm out here in Idaho Springs, Colorado on Chicago Creek, which is actually just behind me. And today I'm here with Brian and Johnny and we're gonna be digging in Chicago Creek here on some private property looking for some placer gold in Chicago Creek. All right, so this is kind of what the property looks like. We can dig pretty much from this bridge on down, but I think we're gonna to stick to the left side of the bridge. So what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna sample pan across the creek here. It's not very big, as you can see, and uh, that'll give us a good idea whether or not there's any gold here. Pan-sized gold nugget. <laughs> I mean, quartz nugget. There is some mineralization in there though, but... Maybe gold if you crush it up. That is extremely cold. It'll wake you up, that's for sure. There's so much black sand, it makes it... Oh yeah, dude, there is gold. All right, so here is the gold. I know it's difficult to see. Right at my fingertip, two little pieces of flower gold, one bigger than the other out of an entire bucket, out of one entire bucket. That's not terrible. I've done worse in other places. Uh, we're gonna try out uh, Ryan's bucket next. Oh yeah, dude. Hey, check this out. Hey, there shouldn't be too much of a glare. You should be able to see that piece of, pla of a plate of gold yeah, right there. That is a plate. There's some more under here too. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and keep panning this. Okay, here we are at the Gatesville Country Store in Nashville, Indiana. This is the building right here, and there's some important paperwork that we have to fill out in order to have permission to actually pan for gold. Uh, in the creek, directly behind the building, it's called the Salt Creek. I did see some prospectors up this way, but I, I'm not sure if we're gonna make it up that way. We're definitely gonna check out the area back here, look for maybe a cobble bar or something, and uh, see if we can find some gold. So let's go fill out that paperwork. So we have Billy and Sam here. These guys are actually fans of my show, which is crazy because I come out to the middle of nowhere and there's these guys like, hey, it's Clash. This is just micro mining. I don't have a dredge or anything like that. But if you did, like you heard uh, Billy there, they only find like maybe a half a grain of gold in here per day, which is still just fine. With that information, it tells me I'm probably going to find just a couple flakes and that's totally fine by me. There is no gold in that first pan, which means we just have to go deeper. Did you see that? No. Right there. It's a piece of quartz. It scared me for a split second. I think we're gonna find some gold in this one. Yeah, we're seeing black sands already. I'm gonna go ahead and pan it back for the camera. This will be my first gold in Indiana. Come on, gold. Let's see what we got here. No gold, I panned this back twice. I didn't see any gold in that pan. This is from the middle of the creek. Oh yeah, we got gold, finally. And it's a nice flake too. Right there, Indiana gold. My first flake of Indiana gold. Um, Kelly Co. is launching a nationwide scavenger hunt in honor of National Scavenger Hunt Day, which is today, May 24th, 2021. Now they chose me because I'm an affiliate of Kelly Co. to actually hide um, a treasure and then ha invite you guys to come try to find it. I happily par am participating in hiding this awesome treasure right here. Uh, it just looks like a yellow envelope, but it is watertight 
and it has all kinds of cool stuff in it. All right, so what's in the treasure? So Kelly Co. sent me a 65th anniversary coin, and that's basically a token um, that you need to take a picture of and email me a picture of that, and I will give you a $50 Kelly Co. gift card. But to encourage you guys a little bit more to get for participation, um, I decided to add a few extra things. So I decided to add a one ounce silver coin, uh, maple, a Canadian maple leaf, an entire Clutch Guitars pick collection from versions one to 10, a bag of pay dirt, um, a sticker, maybe some other stuff. It's all gonna be in here. That is deep snow, man. Well, I'm up in the mountains here in Colorado, just doing some relic finding and looking for some mushrooms, actually. But dude, it's June and we still have a foot of snow on the ground up here. Now, while it is really nice to be able to enjoy cool weather during the summer, I think I'd rather be at the beach. Much better. I'm in Miami Beach, Florida right now. Um, I wanted to make a video here showing you guys how to do some treasure hunting because there is no natural gold in the state of Florida. However, Florida is one of the luckiest states there is because you guys have so many awesome beaches. So many people come and lose their jewelry. So of course, we're gonna be doing a metal detecting video here. Let's take the metal detector out to the beach and see what we can find. Okay, so it is nighttime. Um, I'm using a light from my metal detector to shine this, but I think I got a, a ring here. It's right here. Sorry for the bad quality. I'm using my phone. But yeah, look at that. That's definitely a ring here at the beach. All right. Continue on with the night hunt. Looks like a piece of jewelry right there. Nine, two, five. That's my first. Uh, well, unless that other ring is gold or diamonds or silver or something. This is my first for sure hunk of silver. That's pretty heavy too. Awesome. Stuff, I don't like to drag it around with me, so throw that away. Okay, so from the same hole as that shoe, I found a broken beer bottle cap. A metal detectorist like me, I don't do this very often, but there's guys that do this every single day. Just imagine all the trash that those guys clean up. I don't know why cities decide to ban metal detecting when we clean stuff like this up from the beaches. With the Surf Rider Foundation, they have a little stand and they're walking around. All these guys are walking around like me, yeah. cleaning up the beach. Absolutely, it's so important. So it's been raining the whole drive out here to the Everglades and we passed a couple geocaches that were on like a bike trail across the big uh, river or lake or something. I don't know, there's like this big waterway on the side of the road and you can't get across. So I'm just continuing driving down. I saw this sign and I had to stop and uh, I'm just happy to be in the Everglades. There's all kind of alligators and snakes and everything. If I see anything, I'll make sure I share it with you. Oh, there's an alligator right there, dude. He's coming towards me. Uh, he's getting closer. Actually, I think he's probably coming towards me because people feed him and they're not supposed to. Look at that thing, man. That thing can jump right out of the water at me. I think I'll move along. All right, so this geocache is about a half a mile down this road here. And on this side is this stream and it's just full of alligators. Like there's actually one right there. A small one that is an alligator right there yeah it's right been, there it's been a long time coming a couple of years man and then right up here yep this, this nice oh area. man look how hard they are to see look at that yeah that's that really is cool. hard to see cool got a couple we're gonna leave this little guy right here to yeah. grow and spore out now there's another one here we're on a patch right now two of them 
those are nice and fresh too. Yeah, they are. There's no, those are no more than like a day or two old. No, these are perfect. That's perfect. It's already broken a little bit. Cool. Yeah, dude. Nice. What say you? That was perfect, man. We got this puffball, giant puffball mushroom. Like steak sized chunks. Yeah, nice and that white nice inside. all the way through. That's Obviously, you want to look for bugs. That's how a puffball should look. Sounds like you're cutting into a rubber. Styrofoam. Yeah, styrofoam. Man, look how good. That's all the morels. Morels asparagus, puffball steak. Some actual steak. So that was a lot of fun. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And don't forget to subscribe because we're going to be going out for porcini mushrooms in about a month and a half here. They're going to be popping. They're going to be popping this year. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm here with my daughter Aries. You remember her from videos back in 2019 when we did all of the states in the Northeast United States. I have new hair now. She has new hair and everything. <laughs> and that's her boyfriend, Cade. I have Hello. a new boyfriend too. <laughs> <laughs> and yesterday I actually took Cade out to Arapaho Bar. Ow. Yesterday I actually took Cade out to Arapaho Bar gold panning area in Denver. And he found his first flake of gold, like a pretty nice flake. But that's nothing compared to what we can find up here at Cash Creek Gold Panning Area. So we brought Kate out here and hopefully we can strike some more gold because we saw a big rainbow on the way here and I think that's a sign of good luck. Listen to the storms. We better beat the rain. All right, let's go dig. This is a very popular spot in Colorado to come pan for gold. So we found a nice spot to dig like right about here. I would show it from the other angle, but the sun is just about to set. So I can't get a good shot. There's a nice high wall right here that we're gonna try to dig in. We'll get a bucket of material, maybe two buckets. And then right over here, some water. Kate, I gotta tell you, um, when we're digging into the side of one of these high walls, is what they're called. The exactly, they're called coyote holes. When I was in IMSHA school in Pennsylvania in the coal mines, the first thing they teach you is never even stand near these when they're above your head yeah, or dig into a them. Tons of... All right, so we did three buckets out here and uh, we found two little pieces of flower gold out of three buckets. Two, three, and I found. Oh, you found more than one yeah, piece? Yeah, like those two, but that one up there. Good, grab a little bit. Water piece. There you go. Cool. So that spot isn't really that great. So we're actually gonna move spots. Um, obviously we hit the rain, so we're already wet. It doesn't matter. We're gonna go find a better spot to pan for gold and I'll keep you updated. All right, we have to go that way. That's where the gold is, over there somewhere. So the picker pit, there is nice gold here, but you have to work for it. Oh, a rock? No, a clay. Aries just said she found a piece. Pinkies. Oh yeah, I can see it from here. Nice little flakes in there. Mm -hmm. Point to it so the camera can. One right there, uh, one right there, and a possible tiny one, three little triangles for you. Awesome. All right, I got one here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. In the center. No, nope, at the top. Yeah, it's a nice big piece. Oh wow, that's an awesome piece. I agree. All right, guys. So, uh, how'd you like that? It's pretty fun. I thought it was. I thought the rain added a little bit of excitement. Well, I planned on paying my rent with this school, <laughs> so hopefully we got enough. Yeah. I wouldn't quit your day job, dude. <laughs> We got some corn in the pot. We got some little red potatoes. Probably 
15. Be about 15. I don't want to get too many because it's only me eating them. Heather's not going to eat them. And oh, and I also found one of these little beacons here. Modified Arbor Fabricating Classifier <laughs> to fit right into my pot here. So we'll put them in the boiling water for 10 minutes. And if you could smell that, that is so good. It smells really good. All the juice. Um, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that uh, most of the stuff I do isn't normal anyway. So yeah, here you go. If anybody um, has a fishing license, most states allow it. Um, you're allowed to get an unlimited amount of crawfish. You just boil them up and have yourself an awesome dinner. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. You are not gonna believe the amount of black morels or burned morels that I have found in this patch. See, these are a little bit fresher than the one I found below. Yeah, it's full of bugs, but it's soft. You see that? Keep your eyes underneath. Yeah, that one's still good. That one's totally fresh. I just have to get it out of there without breaking it. Yeah, that worked. Right here. Oh, it's a big one too. It's all covered in dirt, but it's fresh. Oh. Look at that one. Oh man, look at these things. Holy cow. These are fresh, but they have like some kind of mold on them. All right, so I am headed into a burned out, dense forest of smaller pine trees. And I'm looking at the ground over here. Found a nice cluster of morels. I can't tell if they're good. These might be keepers, actually. A nice little cluster. There's another one there. There's a bunch more there. There's one right there. There's a whole bunch right here. These are absolutely still soft. These are total keepers, and they're literally, guys, everywhere. Look at this. There's one there, there's two there, there's one there. There's a cluster up here. Look at this, they're everywhere, man. And I just stepped into this perfect habitat here. I'm not gonna have enough room in my bags. There's another cluster right there, there's another one there. Wow. All right, so in here I have all my choice ones. These are all the fresh ones. And in this other bag, I put all the dry ones that I found uh, in the beginning there. And I'm actually gonna clip this onto my, my belt here as I walk out. So, because these ones here, they're dry and they're actually sporing out. So as I walk, this mesh bag will allow the spores to um, spread spores around for next year. And here we have approximately 200 or so morel mushrooms here. I'll give you a nice, I'll give you a quick look at some of them. This is the biggest one. There's that one and then there's another one. This one here was actually about the same size but a lot of it was rotted so I cut that part off. But there's some nice big clusters here. Um, some of the dried ones, this cluster here was completely dry, but now it's perfect again. I just let them soak for a while. All right, everyone, this is my studio. You guys want me to vacuum the floor, see what kind of gold I've dropped over the, over the months. So I have not vacuumed in at least two months, specifically for this purpose of this video. So let's go ahead and start cleaning this stuff out of here. We'll vacuum really good and we'll pan it out. All right, here it is my vacuumed rug of two months up in my studio and the pay dirt area where we add gold to all the bags of pay dirt. Let's take a look at it in a pan. Nice, all right, let's see what we got here. So I could add water to this, add jet dry, get everything going, but as we all know, fire is always more fun. I'm just gonna go ahead and pan it out. So let's bring over Krusty Rusty. I'll add some water 
and some Jet Dry. That's a surfactant. That'll break the surface tension. Oh, there's some gold for sure. <laughs> I definitely found some gold right there. All right, let me clean this out a little bit better. All right, guys, you are not gonna believe this video. All right, dude, I parked my truck right here. I'm on my way up to Granby, and I don't know if you can see right there, King Belit. Freaking right here, King Belit, and right here. God, dude, look at this. Ho, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, I'm so happy. And I'm just kind of scouting, oh my goodness. Oh. All right, just I just need to make my way up here. Oh, there's a couple of them here. There's a nice choice one. There's a choice one right there, or two. And then up here we have a big one and then a huge one. Here we go again. I'm just walking up a trail. Public access trail. And we got one. I just saw that one, two. There's one coming up there, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Big one over there. And they just keep going all the way up. There's more right there. What the heck? All right, I am back home. This is obviously all my mushrooms that I found. Here we go. Public showers, three dollars per person. Public showers. $3 per person for five minutes. They nail you every time. This is a very expensive place to be though. But it's supposed to be one of the best places in the world to scuba dive right behind that casino building it's called. It's not an actual gambling casino, it's like a theater. But there's a dive park right behind it. All right, so we're dragging our gear over here. We're at the casino building. We're going around the other side. This is where all the scuba stuff is. You can see a couple divers right there. Uh, we're with um, Catalina Divers Supply. So we're gonna look for their trailer, get our tanks, drop off our gear. They have shelves over here. And then we can get in the water. But yeah, these kelp forest, um, they start at the bottom, obviously, and they go all the way to the surface. So they're like 80 feet long, 90 feet long. Um, you'll see some orange fish. Those are called Garibaldi's. They are the California state fish. And they're so bright orange that you can see them from the surface looking down into the water. It's very clear water. We had probably 50 feet of visibility or more. Probably one of the clearest dives I've ever been on. There's a Garibaldi. We made it down. Our, our deepest depth was like 70 feet deep. And uh, it was really cool. There's a Jacques Cousteau memorial hidden somewhere in this kelp. And we went down looking for it. Uh, but we couldn't find it. But that gives us a good reason to go back. So we get to check it out again the next time. Oh, there's that really cool starfish. I got a good picture of it. It was blue and orange. The coral there isn't crazy awesome like in Cozumel. But the kelp is really the highlight of that dive. We actually did three dives that day. And that thing, I didn't know what it was. I think it's a sea cucumber. Somebody in the comments will let me know. I just called it a snot pickle. I guess that's a no-go. I'm gonna have, to, gonna have to find a new thing to do for Wyoming. Still a good hike. I tried. Grab some of this trash at least. That's huge. That's a lot of puffball spores right there. Try not to breathe too many in. 
Hey, there's another one. Man, these are past their prime. They would have been delicious to eat. Look how big that thing is. Man, I know where to come next year. I feel kind of defeated. I'm headed back to the truck. I mean, the good news is I didn't have to carry two full buckets of rocks back with me. And I didn't have to walk that extra mile and a quarter that I would have had to go in order to get those rocks and then back. So, sorry for the wind again. I know it's windy. This is Wyoming. This is not the last video you'll see from here. And I apologize for not finding nothing, but that's kind of how it goes sometimes. All right, guys, well, I apologize uh, for the content and especially for the wind. So I'm gonna keep this short because nobody wants to hear this. But anyway, at least I had a good hike. Um, I know not to come back to this area because there's no gold. At least um, there's no indications that there is gold. You know, the hard packed rocks, you know, the ancient riverbeds, there was no evidence of that. So that's fine. Um, I'll just find another place in Wyoming to visit and uh, yeah, I'll be back. I'm um, in Las Vegas on the strip here and I wasn't gonna film a video or anything. Um, and it, it just so happens I'm right in front of Treasure Island here. So it kind of matches what my channel's all about. So I'm gonna keep my eyes open and see what else we can find here in Vegas. That's a Louis Vuitton button. Yeah. Huh. You would not believe the amount of work it takes just to get that much. About halfway there, I think. Um, it's a dirty job. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody, but let's take it back to Colorado. We'll take it to the panning station. We'll pan it out and we'll see what we get. All right, we're back at the panning station. We have our glove of dirt. Let's go ahead and rip the, actually, first of all, let me show you what I already got. So we'll go ahead and start panning this down. I'm just gonna get all the material wet. As you can see, it's still dry. I'm gonna add a little bit more surfactant to it. This is just some jet dry here. I'm sure of it. That is a faceted gemstone right there. Let me grab it and we'll take a closer look. I think it might be a cubic zirconia or maybe even a real diamond. Yep, 100%. That is a faceted gemstone right there. If it's even a diamond, we're gonna find out. It's saying real. Hey, good morning, everyone. It is Friday morning, which means it's yard sale day. It is September 17th, 2021. About 8.15 in the morning, I'm headed to my first yard sale here at a red light. All right, well, I got this for two bucks. On the back, it says museum quality framing stuff. This has got to be worth more than $2. Put it inside there, but I got this for $6. And if you look at it up close, 12 karat gold filled, and it is sterling silver, 925. Yeah. <laughs> Actually did find something there. It's not solid gold, but it is uh, 18 karat gold filled. So that's pretty good. That's good. All right, there we go. We got a, a geode, a quartz geode with a piece of bismuth and a little prospector guy. All right guys, so I just stopped at this tiny, tiny like storage unit yard sale. And I asked if they had any jewelry because they didn't have anything out. And this lady said that she did have some jewelry that I might not be interested in. But let me zoom in a bit so you can see the details on this watch. It doesn't work, but it looks like it has some sapphires in it, some diamonds, and it looks like it's, it looks like it opens too. Oh wow. All right, so I'm at home and I weighed this stuff up. This is 10 karat, 14 karat, and then 18 karat. So this watch is actually somewhere between 14 and 18 karat gold, but I think we can safely call it nine grams of gold 
I did test for diamonds, and I'll do it again here for you. All right, we have our diamond tester set to four bars here. Turn on the diamond. Whoops. It's hard to do this one-handed, but it does set off as genuine diamonds. $296 worth of gold. That's not including the diamonds or the other gemstones. The um, actual movement part of the watch, you can actually take that out of there. And I'll show you some pictures here as I'm talking. Um, but I took it out of there and this thing for sure, um, my original acid tests were correct. It is 18 karat gold. Um, they are real diamonds and it weighs 10.90 grams with the movement inside the watch. Today I'm up in the Roosevelt National Forest in Colorado on South Boulder Creek. Now this creek is known for very nice gold. actually sitting on some really big boulders right here. It's not real bedrock, but they're big enough that they can trap gold in the cracks inside of them. That stuff is barely moving. Now if I can dig all of that out, um, I know that it hasn't been messed with. So I know if there's gold that ever ran over these cracks, that gold's still gonna be trapped underneath. Okay, so after I dug up these big chunks here, I noticed down below there's even more cracks which the gold can actually fit and hide down inside there. So we have to get down as far as humanly possible. This tool makes an impossible job actually possible and kind of fun. Now this piece here is worth keeping because it has material on the underside. go. That's what we want. And look at that. It's a big section of, uh, that's all quartz in there. All right. So after a good hour and a half or two hours, uh, I got crack number two completely opened up. Um, all it's all yabby pumped out and right up in the woods here. I'm going to hide a bag of my gold pay dirt from clutchgold.com. I'm going to hide this bag right there all right these are waterproof if it rains it'll be fine um yeah man next person that comes up here you're guaranteed some gold anyway let's go back to the panna station we'll pan out that material and we'll see what kind of gold we get all right here we got crack one and crack two which i couldn't fit all this material in one pan we have our plus and minus kitchen strainer of crack one and two lots of flower gold and even some flakes in there <laughs> we made it. <laughs> <laughs> look at this. All right, so that's what got my attention. Oh, it's a crinoid. Look. look. It's a shell. Oh, it's a brachiopod. Dude. All right. Hey, everybody. We are in Minnesota. You guys know Ryan from so, previous videos. That whole thing is full of fossils. That's hundreds of millions of years old. Yeah, these are 450 ish million years old we're in wangs we're, oh yeah we're also in wangs corner which is pretty much the coolest name for any town ever <laughs> so uh we're gonna keep looking for fossils and um yeah wish us luck i think we're we're gonna find some cool stuff trilobite? dude that might be part of a trilobite right there oh my. this piece is just completely full of fossils that is really neat it looks like there's like scales on that that piece right there all right, so just scoping over this again with the flashlight. I'm seeing all kinds of little stuff here. There's a bryzoan right there. There's more. There's a brachiopod right there. This is cool. All right, back in Colorado, under some better filming conditions, you can see I have collected a good amount of bryozoan fragments here. These are different brachiopods. 
So today, I'm in Wisconsin for my 50 States of Treasure Hunting series. And today, we're going over to Nugget Lake County Park to meet up with Jason from Flower Gold Wizards. We're gonna go over there, we're gonna look for some gold, and hopefully we can find some. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. First shovel full, I noticed a nice layer of clay in there. Look at this. That's where all of our gold's gonna be on top of, most likely. Now this is mostly flower gold, so we gotta be really careful when we're panning it back. It's just washing rocks, man. We're getting down close to the end here anyway. I didn't even classify it as you can see. But we don't have to. Just classifying would help a lot, to be honest. Go like that. Just panning it back slowly. Just looking for any little specks of gold. I didn't find any gold in Wisconsin yet. This might be the very first pan. I don't know if you could see it on camera, then my shadow might be wrong, but right there is a little speck. You got it? Yep. I'm gonna grab it. All right. Probably from here to that corner, and then there's an inside bend here too, but I think the gold is coming off of the inside bend straight across right to where that water's coming out in that area. Probably wondering why is there gold here? So I asked Jason if it was glacial till, um, that's the kind of gold that you're going to find in most of the Midwest and most of the country actually. Well here in this part of Wisconsin, this is actually a meteor impact crater. So it's called the Rock Elm Disturbance and that's kind of why people think that there's gold, more gold in this area than other places. It's like a nine mile wide impact crater. So I think that's pretty interesting and I thought that you guys would like to know because I know you guys are gonna be asking in the comments anyway. So that's why we think there's gold here. Wow, you were right, this was the uh, super hot spot. But this is also a full bucket. There's another piece. All right, I'm gonna clean out the sluice. I'll put it in the, uh, in the pan and let's see what we get. Oh yeah, there's more gold. There's a nice piece. Look at that. Right there, we got two pieces right there. The Jason ain't messing around. He's got a high banker and everything up here going. You better believe it. I'm just waiting for mittens here to get scooping water. <laughs> mittens, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Half down gold. Couple three specks. Couple two tree? Yeah. Yeah, right around here. One, two, maybe three. Oh, yeah. Oh. Little bits right. of flower gold. Yep. Heck yeah. Yeah, man. That baby dialed in. You're supposed to go three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is our second cleanup with our borrowed sluice. Oh, uh, we got a piece of flower gold right there. Right there, yep. see? There's some strange, interesting like rocks in here too. I don't see any garnets yet. It's coming through as I pan it back. Yeah. Pretty good. I mean, bad. for dude, for one bucket, that's just as good as we do in Colorado all day. It really is. I'm gonna tap this up here. One bucket, not bad. It's right by that rock. How about it, Jason? I'm just in awe of your panning skills. He's really good. Here I thought he was just a big Hollywood movie star. <laughs> well, I am, you know. <laughs> Heck yeah. One, two, three. Couple two, three. And uh, I'm gonna head back to the panning station. We're gonna pan out all this gold we found here. Thanks a lot, Jason, for inviting me out here. This My was, pleasure. This was friggin' awesome, dude. If anybody's ever in uh, Wisconsin, Nugget Lake County Park, you can come in here. It's like five bucks to park. It's coming here, you can pan for gold and you can find what I found. So anyway, I'll see you guys back at the panning station.
across the raging river. Not as easy as it looks. Alright, well, this really isn't turning out to be my day. I just accidentally dropped my Arbor Fabricating Classifier into this waterfall, so... I didn't see it come out downstream, so I think it's still stuck in here. So I'm gonna go try to get it, I guess. You can hear me okay. My other battery died, so again, not going as planned, but nothing's gonna stop me. Right underneath this pile of rocks here on this bedrock, I'm gonna clean all that out. I'm gonna hope for a crevice down below because it must be a low point because of all these rocks here. And I'm gonna dig underneath there. I'm gonna collect up all that material and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I was able to clear out all those rocks and as you can see, it looks like we might have a crevice that goes along here, 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 and also here. So that'll give us something to look through. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys back at the panning station. All right, so here's our material. And we got some grass and sticks and everything in here.